Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be painting this geometric design in watercolour. So to start with, I've got some watercolour paper on a block. I've got my watercolours out. I got my gold out, but I didn't end up using it. I've got a couple of brushes, but I mainly used the, uh, the pointed round brush in size 6. I've got a couple of jars of water, a paper towel, and then for the design part, I've got a pencil. I've got my really ugly but really effective putty eraser. I've got a ruler and a set of compasses. I'm going to use the ruler just to roughly find the center of the page. Just make a couple of marks. You could measure it if you wanted to. And then I take my compasses and I decide what width I want them to be. Now this will change depending on what size paper you're using, but mine is 18 centimeters wide. So nine centimeters is half of the page. So if I make my compasses three centimeters, I should get three circles across the page. I put the point of the compasses right in the center of my paper where I made that cross. And I start by making one simple circle. Now I know that nine centimeters is uh, the half of the width of the paper. So I make a little mark at the top of the circle and that's gonna be my starting point for my next circle. I put the point of the compass where that point meets my circle and I draw another one, making sure it goes right through that center point. And I'm just gonna keep making circles. My next one is gonna be where those two circles meet and then another one on another intersection point. And I just keep working around the circle until I've got one in the center and six around the outside. Hopefully, if all's gone well, my circle should meet up at um, where the fifth circle meets the sixth one. Sometimes there's a little bit of a gap, but don't worry too much. Now I'm just going to keep going and doing the same thing around the rest of the page. Wherever there's an intersection point between two circles, I place the point of my compasses and make another circle. Each circle should meet several other intersection points. And as I keep going, I keep developing this pattern of little kind of petal shapes around a central point. Now I'm trying to be quite systematic about how I go about expanding this circle, but actually it doesn't matter. As long as you make every point, every circle start on the intersection of two more circles, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in. I'm going to keep going until I've completely filled the page, making sure that every uh, point that I can put the compass down has a circle on it, even if some of that circle goes off the edge of the page. Now I take my eraser and I just go over it very lightly, just pressing down to take away some of the areas of pencil where it's a little bit dark. I don't want to erase the lines completely, I still want to see where they are, but I just want to make them a little bit lighter. And now it's time to go in with some colour. I've chosen five colours here out of my current palette. I've got Payne's Grey, Moon Glow, Buff Titanium, Raw Sienna and Quinacridone Burnt Orange. And I'm working on this plate, which I'm using as a palette. I just add a little bit of water to each colour to wake it up. And then I transfer the colour onto the palette. If 
For each colour I pick up on my brush, I might paint two or three petals in that colour. Sometimes I'll add a little bit more water onto my brush, just to give me a slightly different effect, a slightly different colour. I really love the effect of this buff titanium where it hits the other colours. It's quite a powerful colour and it seems to push them back. It's really, it's really fun to watch. And you can paint your petals in any order, but I'm trying to kind of focus them on the kind of the central points where those petals meet. Making sure that I've got some colours touching in the centre, so they do some interesting bleeds uh, between different areas. I start by just running through the colours that I've chosen, picking one and then the next and then the next, creating a little area on the palette for each colour and allowing the colours to blend on the page. So generally I'll paint one petal in a kind of saturated version of the colour and then I'll paint the next one uh, with a slightly wetter version without adding any more colour, just putting a bit more water on my brush. And then I might dip into some of the other areas on the palette to kind of mix the colours up a little bit. They will get a little muddy as the painting goes along, but that's okay because I can always go back into the pans and get some of the pure colour again. But I'll get lots of interesting mixes where the paints meet on the palette. The paints grey and the moon glow are very kind of similar really, they do a similar kind of job. They're kind of quite dark, um, greyish neutral colours. The moon glow is more purple, skews more purple, and it's granulating, which means that it kind of sits into the areas of the paper and it has a slightly different effect. The paints grey skews more blue and it's this kind of smoother colour. Where the Payne's Grey meets some of the warm tones, the raw sienna or the burnt orange, you get more of an olivey green. Where the moon glow mixes, you get more of a brown. So it's quite interesting doing this with different selection of colours. Seeing how different colours mix and blend. As I go through the painting, I paint some of the petals in slightly different ways. For some of them, I put the point of the petal right in the centre of the, the flower, push it down and pull it out to try and create a nice petal shape. And then sometimes I'm outlining the petals and then trying to fill in my outlines. Whatever I do, I'm using the very tip of my brush at the end to kind of neaten up the shapes and try and make them a little bit more even. And I do like to keep varying the colours so that I've got some more saturated areas and some that are much more watery and pale and soft. If I notice I haven't used a colour for a while, I'll go into that one. I'm always kind of surveying the whole thing and seeing what I might need to balance it out. Do I need a warm colour here or a cool one? A light one or a dark one? Sometimes I lose my pencil line a little bit, especially later on in the painting when my hand has maybe been leaning on the paper a little bit. If you find that's a problem, you could counter it by uh, using a clean sheet of paper to rest your hand on. As I get further and further through the painting, you can see that my palette gets more and more messy with different areas of colours mixing and bleeding together. 
it becomes much easier then to find a nice middle ground colour. A kind of a warm or a cool neutral based on the colours that are just freely mixing on the palette. But if I'm not careful to keep going back to some of the pure colours occasionally, it could all just end up being very much the same and a bit muddy at the bottom. So even though there's plenty of paint on my palette, I do still keep going back occasionally to the paint in the pans, just to get a nice pure hit of colour on my brush. And then as the painting is coming to an end, I'm trying to decide if it needs anything more. I did get my gold paint out and a nice fine paintbrush, and I had intended to go around each of the areas again with gold. But when I was surveying it, I decided that actually I quite like it as it is. So all I needed to do was to go around when I was quite sure it's all dry and remove any of my pencil lines that I could still see. And then that's it. That's my finished painting. Thanks for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you give it a go, I'd love to see your version of it. If you post your work to Instagram, tag me at Lou Rachel Davis, because I love being included when you share your work. And I hope that you have fun. Happy painting. Thanks, bye-bye.